So my project focuses on a series of photographs relevant to the Victorian period, the photographs belonging to the relationship of Arthur Mumby and Hannah Colwick. What is significant about the relationship is that both individuals were from a different class. Hannah was a working class girl, a maid and a servant from Shropshire, England. Arthur Mumby, on the other hand, was an intellect, a poet, a barrister. He was a middle class man. Mumby often fetishized Hannah's working class status and he would represent this through the photographs in which Hannah was taken. Both of them participated in the photographs together whereas they took turns sort of directing and instigating the photo. And both of them carried on a relationship that lasted about 36 years and a marriage that carried on in secret. One of my main arguments that I explore in the paper is the arguments of Martin A. Dana Hay, who argues that Victorian men would represent their and project their own desires onto women through Victorian imagery, and he uses the term mirror to sort of describe this. He claims that the men aren't actually representing the subject matter of the work, but their own sexual fantasies and desires, and he applies this to Mumby's approach to the photographs of Hannah. On the other hand, we have Carol Mather, who is arguing that photography is synonymous with performance, and she's arguing that Hannah is performing, and that while many critics and scholars are trying to argue that Hannah is oppressed, she is in fact very much participating in these photos, and she has an incredibly sexual, sexual uh, role in these photos, and her sexuality is very powerful. And she argues that many critics are in fact trying to strip Hannah of her sexuality, which is not the case. This leads to me to my thesis on the basis of the contrast of these two arguments, which says, through an exploration of Mumby's photographs in conjunction to a study of class and gender norms relevant to Victorian England, in addition to this idea of photography as performance, we will attempt to understand who these photographs seek to empower. And now one example I use is hands. Hands were very important for Victorians, and one of the photographs that Mumby took of Hannah were of her hands. Hands were important because they were symbolic of class, because rough sort of calloused hands like Hannah had were associated with physical labor which was associated with the kind of work only working class people would do and then intellectual labor didn't really require handiwork so intellectual labor which was associated with middle class working individuals middle class working individuals in turn had soft and calloused hands like Mumby so when Mumby is taking a picture of Hannah's hands he is absolutely fetishizing her working class status because those hands that she has are associated with working class. Additionally, they're quite masculine, and Mumby, being quite effeminate himself, sort of found a sense of masculinity through Hannah. So in that sense, one can say that Dana Hayes' argument is taking place. However, Maeva points out, in addition to Leonor Davidoff, both point out that Hannah actually intentionally went out of the way to wreck her hands. She would actually rub them on grates and sort of cut them up for Mumby because they were in a relationship and Hannah was in love with Mumby and she would do things out of her love for Mumby. Additionally, she enjoyed, she participated in the photos. She was proud of her working class status. So she was just as much sort of putting her role in. And the hands, the, the each mark on the hand is a performance in itself. You know, the hands are a performative sort of memory and the photograph captures that. And it leads me to my conclusion that while many may argue that Mumby is oppressing Hannah, Hannah is in a sense getting empowered by all of this because Mumby is embracing her for qualities that are a part of who she is. She identifies as a working class woman. She's very proud of her sort of masculinity and rough exterior. And out of his love for her, he loves all those things about her. And it sort of fuels his love for her. And in turn, he empowers her. And she empowers him. You know, she sort of allows him to project these desires onto her and fetishize her. So what I draw from all of this is that there isn't really power on one side. It, this is a situation, a very unique and special situation in the Victorian period where two individuals of a different class and a different gender could work alongside each other in power. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it.